Hi, welcome back. So I want to play around with the jukeboxes a little bit more, make a final decision on whether I want to try to keep one or fix it and actually make it work and sell it, or just get rid of the whole lot. I toyed with this one, or this one, one of the two, that it's just basically for parts. And all four of these, the carriage is locked up. And the old grease in the chains and in the gears is just, it's like tar. Everything's just stuck together. So the worst one, there's a lot of things wrong with. I figured I can't really hurt it. It's, it's already a disaster. So I just started really manhandling these parts around. Since they don't have motors on these, somebody has taken the motors out, sold them, whatever they did with them, used them for others. There's really nothing to restrict it but that grease. Well, after just really forcing it to the point where something was going to break, the lube broke loose. That old tar, sticky substance finally broke loose and everything started to move. The gears are really beefy. It's got good solid bearings. It's got some brass fittings. So I'm pretty confident that I can get everything to break loose and start to work just by taking the motors off and maybe just lubricating some gears and chains on this one. So I want to try that out. So to start with, looks like I need to just get some of these cosmetic plastic covers and things out of the way. There is a hole in this panel. I would imagine that light goes through that panel, whatever that light indicates. I had to tie this door shut. So what I'd like to start with first is taking these motors off. There's a, a motor on this side, and there's another one on this side. And it looks like that's really all the, the drive motors to make all these components <laughs> work. You've uh, got this that, that pulls out the records. There's a little slide piece in here that actually holds the records in place. Um, you've got these gears that lets it all pivot and twist. And then you've got the turntable and the needle. Now, all of these pieces are just locked up, with the exception of this one. So you can see this motor is driving. This one, I loosened it up a little bit and you can see inside of that motor it's trying to turn so I think it's just a matter of everything is really gummed up so that's a really good sign now I know that that motor works and like the one I was playing with that I got manhandling and wasn't worried about breaking this is just really gummed up really thick and sticky so if I can get all of that to break loose, and then I'll take that motor off and make sure it runs as good as this one. We're going along with uh, winging it. <laughs> I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I pulled this motor out, and it's connected right there, and there's an on and off switch. I can turn it on and off, and I can pull them in and out, and there's a reset button, but I can't get this to turn. And I'm just kind of playing around with things. And I found a little servo or some kind of a connection. And that motor works just dandy. That chain is just really gummed up. So it does not move very well. So I'll get this motor in and I'll manually switch it to go back and forth and see if I can loosen that chain up. 
Well, for not having a clue what I'm doing, I'm starting to find things out. There is a, a little trip switch here from the needle that runs this carriage side to side. As you can see it's very gummed up. I think it should be running about that speed. It's probably just going to have to run it through many, many cycles to loosen up all the gear oil and the grease and everything that's in this. And this shaft is, is pretty sticky, so I'm going to run some steel wool on that. This motor runs continuously because it's trying to lift this bar up. So whatever it is in the servos or any of the controls, it's waiting for a signal to stop. It needs to get all the way up, go through its cycle, go all the way back down and stop. I gotta figure out where that is. What is those limits? This one reverses the motor. Well, I'm making a little more progress. I finally got this to work loose, which is the gripper for the record. This part was froze up as well. I just kept spraying my uh, garage door blaster. <laughs> so I was finally able to get some of these parts to break loose. Now you can see how it revolves with the record on it. Drops the record down into place. This lets go. And at this point, I don't know what happens. I don't know if it just stops right here while it plays, and then it picks it back up. And once it puts the record back where it belongs, it pulls that back again, but I don't know what pulls that back. I can't, there's no mechanism that links to that. So oh, there must be something internal in here that pulls this back to release the record so that it can move to the next record. And then it has some sort of mechanism so that it knows which way to drop the record. It needs to be able to know A side or B side, and that I'm not able to figure out either. Ah, oh, there we go. Then you've got the B side. And there's a switch in the back side here that flips. And then there's the A side. Not exactly sure what trips that and what trips this release. I don't know if there's something missing or if there's something internal. I'll keep playing with it. I'm getting closer. Uh, these little fingers across the bottom are driven by these solenoids, these switches. Um, they're sticking, so I've got to get all of those cleaned so, so they'll start working. But if I manually push one, okay, there we go. It's, it's searching for that trip.
It's getting close. I, I, it appears like everything might just work. It just needs a really good cleaning. Uh, it's just a matter of taking everything apart, cleaning all the little solenoids and servos and little trip sensors. There's little rocker arms here on the bottom. It looks like it just might work. Now I need to see if the amplifier and all the electronics work for the actual needle. Because right now, there's no noise from the needle. And nothing is lighting up on the amplifier. All the bulbs should light up when it's turned on. And, and there's nothing lighting up on that. The other machine looks like it's the exact same amplifier and it all lights up. So I might just swap the two. Well, it's pretty exciting. I think this thing's going to work. That was a great success, actually. <laughs> I was really having my doubts. I thought there was something missing here in the back, but it's just a matter of, it does all the evens going this way and it does all the odds going that way. So A side, B side. It works great, it's still extremely dirty. Uh, the arm was catching and hitting, it just needed a little bit of adjustment. Now and then it gets stuck going back and that just needs a lot of cleaning. Pretty exciting. But really, the thing to do now is to try the amp. Let's see if I can get any sound out of it. Uh, this needle it is really messed up. I don't know if there's another needle available. It is all there. It's just all tweaked. So I'm hoping I can take it apart and delicately tweak it back <laughs> where it should go. Uh, it is picking up a record when, it, when it's on and it's in track. I can hear sound, very, very faint, but it is picking up. So uh, that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll play around with the electronics and see if we can actually get some, some speaker sound and get some real music. Well, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate your watching. Give me a like if you like what I'm doing. Leave me a comment. Love to hear from you. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye for now.